Hi, welcome back to another episode of Your Money Mindset, guiding you to achieve lasting financial freedom and peace of mind. I'm John McGregor. You know, I will say this could be the most important video I've ever done, and certainly the most important one any young adult watches. And I do not, I do not say that to get views. I say that because I don't want you or anyone for that matter to fall victim to what I've seen firsthand to the thousands of people who have. I'm gonna be pretty blunt and straight here to the point, but this needs to be said. This video is for anyone in high school or college or just entering the workforce. Frankly, this video is for anybody, but my focus here today is dedicated to those young adults just starting out in the real world. The real, real world, not the world they think is real. And I want to be very candid here. This is your wake-up call. I'm going to share the secret sauce, the secret I did and my wealthy clients did to achieve financial freedom and peace of mind. The secret that can and will change your life forever if you apply it in your life. When I was 21, I adopted this principle into my life and stuck to it vigilantly. And I set my goal to be financially free by the time I was 40 years old. And I hit my goal at age 37, three years ahead of schedule. And there is no question you can do the same. This is not rocket science. In fact, it's very basic. Yet sadly, so few people end up doing it and end up living a life of financial stress and pain and anxiety their entire lives. And this core principle has given me so much freedom, peace and confidence and my ability to live with purpose and to be able to pursue the vision I set out for myself on my own terms, not on somebody else's. As a result, I'm not stressed about money bills, credit cards, or anything else financially related, simply because I adopted this principle early in life and I stuck to it. So if you know anyone in that demographic, that young adult, that high schooler, that college student, that person who is just starting out, please do them a favor and send them this video. But before I get into it, I just want to share a little context around it because it's extremely important you understand the why behind this. I was 21 years old living in Hawaii, landscaping, in between classes at the university. I write about this story in my book and how this moment radically changed my life for the better. We were working on my favorite house. I mean, looking back, I mean, this house, this is a gorgeous estate overlooking the ocean. I mean, this estate had everything. The pool, the barbecue, the jacuzzi, the outdoor entertainment system. This house was straight out of a luxury magazine. The owners, they drove nice cars, they had the nice jewelry. He wore the Rolex watch, she had the Gucci handbags. They had the two purebred show dogs. And from the outside, it looked like they had it all. In my mind, they were living the dream. But what you couldn't see is the real story on the inside. They were living an absolute nightmare. They were broke. In fact, they were bankrupt. It had been a while since I had seen them at the house and I asked my boss, Larry, where they were. Larry knew them personally. I just assumed they were, they were on some luxury vacation somewhere around the world. And that's when Larry told me the real story, that they were bankrupt and they were hiding from creditors. He said they were living in the basement of the wife's sister's house. The basement, hiding. We were doing their yard on credit or as a favor. And that's when Larry told me, John, you would be shocked to know how many of the beautiful houses we work on are in similar situations and are one paycheck or one commission check away from going under. And then he said that term that we're all familiar with, but added an extra punch in the end that literally changed my life in a flash. He said, John, most people are laser focused on keeping up with the Joneses. And then he said, but in reality, the Joneses are broke as well. Well, that was my aha moment that I needed. That was the kick in the pants that I needed to hear and feel. And from that moment on, everything changed. And I swore to myself, I would never, ever put myself in that situation. And that's when I vowed that I would be financially free by the time I was 40. It was an aggressive goal I set, I know. But suddenly, all my priorities shifted in a massive, massive way. But that was my game changer moment. 
And as I said earlier, I hit my goal at age 37 using a very basic strategy that I'm gonna share with you in a moment. That example, that story I shared, is commonplace, sadly, throughout society. People are living a facade, spending money they don't have on things they don't need, simply to impress that people that, frankly, don't care at all. People are essentially competing with one another, namely on social media, for who has the, the nicest stuff for the, the most luxurious vacation. And in the end, what has happened so many times over the 25 years, I've been working with thousands of individuals of all walks of life, all income ranges, all net worths, is they come into my office at age 65 and they say to me, John, I'm ready to retire, let's make it happen. And then they lay out their financial statements and in most cases within a few minutes, I can tell right away that there is no way they can retire. Certainly not the way they envision for themselves and for their families. It's the hardest conversation I have to have with people. When I have to tell a 65 year old that there's simply not enough money to retire the way they want to retire, and they're either gonna have to live a very frugal life or continue working. Look, do you think those elderly people working at McDonald's or Walmart or any other retailer or fast food restaurant, do you really think they wanna be there? Absolutely not. The reason they're there is because they have to. They have no choice. They have to survive. And you know what? You know who falls into this situation more than anyone? It's women. Yeah, it's women. It's usually the woman, since the husband typically passes away first and usually leaves the surviving spouse, his wife, with a financial mess and not enough money to survive the next 10, 15, or 20 years of her life. And here are some sobering stats that you must pay attention to. Of the elderly living in poverty, three out of four are women. 80% of women living in poverty were not poor when their husbands were alive. Approximately seven out of 10 women will at some point live in poverty. I mean, believe that, that's crazy. 90% of all women will have sole responsibility for their finances. Let those sink in for a moment. If you think this can't be you, you're wrong. But if you think and believe with all your heart this will not be you, then you're right. Do you see the difference between those two statements? I just don't want you to fall into that same trap, and you don't have to. I don't want you to be another 65-year-old that walks into an advisor's office only to be told that there is no way, no way you're going to be able to retire after working your tail off for 30 or 40 years. So what prompted me to do this video? I love to sit in the sauna after I work out and conversations always arise. And many people in the gym, they know what I do. They, they know I work with Robert Kiyosaki and they know I wrote an, an international best-selling book and, and they know I speak around the world, etc. And so many of them, they, they always wanna pick my brain on how to achieve this financial freedom. And I love it. I mean, I love to help in any way I can. And I learn a lot from them as well. So it's a great conversation. But I always ask the young adults, how do they foresee their future? What, what does that vision look like? What does retirement mean to them? And how do they envision themselves going through life, building their net worth so that they can retire one day in the future? And you know what? In every situation, I get that blank stare because most people in general, but in this case, most young adults have never ever thought about it. Yes, they all wanna be rich and they all wanna be successful, but no one has really thought it through, what it actually means and what it actually takes. In most cases, using borrowed money, they drive a nice car, they live in nice places, they wear the, the nice clothes, the, they have the nice handbags, the nice watch, the latest iPhone, the, the biggest flat screen, and of course, the tattoos. I mean, they've spent hundreds, if not thousands, on tattoos. And despite all that stuff they own, I mean, sorry, is on, cre is on a credit card, they have done nothing about their financial future. They have saved zero, nothing for the future. And look, we have entered a new paradigm today. 20 or 30 years ago, you could fake it. You got a job, you had job security. You had a reliable paycheck. And after 30 years, you could retire with that, that gold watch and a guaranteed pension for life, right? Social security was stable and provided some, some monthly income. <clears throat> and you also had a nice nest egg that you accumulated over time. 
Well, I'm sorry, that rosy scenario is no longer the case. Job security is no longer what it was. I mean, think about our artificial intelligence and what that's gonna do to the job market, your job market. I mean, just one example, there are 3.6 million truck drivers today. In 10 years or so, with driverless vehicles, those truck drivers may be looking for another line of work. 3.6 million, and that's just one occupation. We just saw the government destroy millions of jobs and businesses over a flu virus. And what did that do to the entire economy and to people's paychecks? It destroyed them. Look, people's financial future used to be based on the three-legged stool, the company pension, social security, and personal savings. Well, that three-legged stool is, is more like a high wire act you're hoping you don't fall off of. Pensions don't exist anymore, well, for the most part, as more and more companies are they're not offering them. And those companies that still do offer a pension have really scaled back the benefits because they're just too expensive and too much of a liability on a company's balance sheet. And those pensions that do exist today, many if most are severely underfunded. They can't pay out their benefits. And lastly, many of these promised benefits that were guaranteed in writing are being slashed dramatically. We are seeing these pension benefits across the country being challenged in court and the employees, those that have worked their tail off for 30 to 40 years, are losing those court cases and seeing their promised, guaranteed, in writing, benefits slashed. It's an absolute travesty. Then you have Social Security, where the Social Security Trust Fund will be depleted by 2034. That's 13 years from now. I mean, look it up yourself. Look it up for yourself if you don't believe me. Depleted. Couple that with the lack of personal savings people have, and this is a train wreck for so many people that are hoping to retire one day, but simply can't. Look, 78% of people are living paycheck to paycheck, 78%, and 64% of people could not come up with $500 for an emergency expense. I hope you're starting to see the message here. Look, the median balance in a 401k plan is $70,000, and that's not the fault of the 401k. It's because people are not using them or putting enough money in them. And many don't even invest their money when they do contribute. Their money just sits in a cash account earning nothing. For someone today who is counting on their 401k for retirement, $70,000 may last a year, maybe a, a year and a half. And then what? Well, hopefully a, a thousand, hopefully a thousand dollar monthly check from Social Security if that's still around. And how long will that last? So why did all of this happen? Because people live large and they neglect the future. They assume everything will work out in the end. But assuming is not a retirement strategy. People never took the time to plan their financial future or prepare for it. And then it was too late. So for you, the younger generation, you have an amazing opportunity now, today, to change that for yourself and your future family and radically change your life for the better. I mean radically for the better. But you must start now. Not today, but now. Because I'm telling you, if you do what I'm about to suggest, it will radically transform your life in such a profound and meaningful and abundant manner, your life could become so much easier and provide you with so much peace of mind and freedom down the road. It is an amazing feeling when money is not a source of stress in your life. Trust me. Okay, so here it is. Are you ready? Okay, for every dollar that hits your bank account from your employer or wherever your income comes from, 20 cents is swept into an investment account automatically and invested. In other words, 20% of your take home pay is immediately taken off the table and swept into an account for your future retirement. Never, ever to be touched. I mean never. And make sure this is done automatically. If you have to write a check to that account every two weeks, it's, it simply will not happen. Set up an account at a financial institution, your bank, a robo-advisor, a financial advisor, it doesn't really matter where. Just make sure you are putting away 20% of your money every time it hits your bank account automatically. 
Most of that money should be invested for a very, very long time. I'm talking 30 to 40 years. But you also wanna build up an emergency account equal to six months of your expenses, or approximately six months. That amount will not be invested. Rather, you would keep that in a money market or a savings account. This, is the, this money is in the event you lose your job or can't work for whatever reason. You will have a cushion to keep you going until you get back on your feet. Okay, the remaining 80% of your take-home pay is used for all of your expenses. Housing, living, car, meals, utilities, clothing, cell phone, cable bill, entertainment, you get the drift. And if the remaining 80% is not enough to cover those expenses, then you need to seriously examine your expenses and cut back and or figure out a way to increase your income. And there are millions of ways to do that today. In every single case I've seen, I can tell you, I've seen firsthand people are wasting money on things they don't need or spending too much on those things they do need. Most of the time, people are living in a much nicer place than they should be at the current moment. At the current moment, their, current, their car is way too expensive. They're spending too much money at high-end restaurants. They're traveling to exotic locations. They're buying clothes from, from high-end retailers. They're blowing a ton of money in, in bars and, and nightclubs. And they're covered in thousands of dollars worth of tattoos. Look, tattoos may have some sentimental value to you, but they're gonna do nothing for your future and definitely nothing for your retirement. Now, let me be clear here. I am not against tattoos at all, but I am against people who are living paycheck to paycheck or barely scraping by that have them. If you need a tattoo, how about waiting till you've got your financial life in order and then knock yourself out and cover your entire body if that's what you wanna do. And that's just not about tattoos. There are a ton of things people are wasting their hard-earned money and later regretting it. Where you want to be is 50% of your take-home pay should be on those things you need. Your housing expenses, food, utilities, insurance, cell phone. And 30% should be on once. That's your entertainment, your movies, your restaurants, your vacation, and Netflix, etc. And look, I'm not here to tell you you need to live a boring life. I certainly didn't as I grew my net worth, not at all. There's nothing I went without for the most part. I just did them more economically or I found an alternative way to pay for them. I had a great life in my younger years and I was still able to hit my personal financial goals and you can too. Look, let me be clear here. This is not about sacrificing gratification. This is about delaying your gratification for when you really need it and when you really want it and frankly, when you really deserve it. You don't need to impress people with what you own. In fact, my next video is titled The Number One Secret of My Millionaire Clients and you will find all of them could care less about trying to impress others with what they own. They didn't care at all. The bottom line here is it boils down to your priorities in life. Do you want to live large now and continue to live paycheck to paycheck, struggling day after day and end up working for the rest of your life? Or do you want to live a much larger life later and have an amazing retirement? Well, I, I sincerely hope you chose the latter. Now, the next thing you need to do is invest that money. That's the 20% minus your emergency fund we talked about earlier. And I would work with a financial institution, financial advisor, or someone like that to develop a long-term investment plan. This could be a robo-advisor, a financial advisor, banks handle investment accounts. There are a ton of resources out there to choose from. Just do your homework. Shop and compare. I mean, there are a ton of resources on the, on the basics of investing, and it is not complicated. Trust me, it's not. I have another video titled 401k versus Roth IRA versus traditional IRA, which one is best? I would also encourage you to check that out as well. And for the younger generation, as we're talking about here, 100% of your invested money should be invested in the stock market. You should have no bonds. And here's why. The average return in the stock market over time, going back 100 years or so, the average return has been approximately 10% on average. Regardless of what's happened in world history, whether it's wars or market crashes or embargoes or terrorist attacks, viruses or assassinations, the average return has been about 10%. 
Yes, markets go up and down, but over time, the market has generated a 10% average rate of return over time. That doesn't mean 10% every single year. That means the markets are up 14 one year, down six the next, up 10, down four, up 12, down six, et cetera. So that over time, if you smooth out those returns, you're looking at an average return just around 10%. So let's run the numbers. Let's say you put away $1,000 a month for the next 30 years and you got a 7% rate of return. I know, that's less than the 10% I mentioned. I just want to be conservative here. You would have close to $1.3 million in 30 years. And if you put away $2,000 per month for 30 years at 7%, that would be $2.6 million. Now, I know what you may be thinking. 30 years sounds like a long way off, but I will tell you firsthand, it will go by in a snap. Trust me on that. I mean, it seems like just yesterday I graduated from college. It's crazy how time flies. So let's say, hypothetically, you did get a 10% rate of return on that $1,000 per month. Now you're looking at $2.2 million in 30 years. I mean, that could go a long way to providing you and your family with a ton of flexibility, comfort, and peace of mind. Believe me, it just boils down to your priorities. Is having all that stuff now worth living paycheck to paycheck, dealing with the constant strain of financial stress, and perhaps working for the rest of your life? Or would you rather do the right things now and have an amazing future? What's your priority? Check out any compounding calculator online. They are actually fun to play with. You will see for yourself, the more you put away now, the more time your money has to grow and compound, which is why it is so essential you start immediately. In fact, start now. All right, I'm gonna wrap up there. I hope you can see why I said earlier this could be one of the most important videos a young adult watches. If you or they embrace this basic principle that I personally use to achieve financial freedom at a very young age, as did my wealthy clients, this will be a game changer for you and your family for the rest of your life, period. Look, the hard, cold reality is that you are solely responsible for your financial future. Not your company, not the government, not Social Security, not your parents, and not your spouse. It's on you. And you must start thinking about this and taking action immediately. Otherwise, you could be working at McDonald's well into your 80s, like so many have and are doing today. And by the way, ladies, your husband is not your financial plan. I've heard that too many times over the years. Those stats I shared earlier should make that perfectly clear. And just a reminder to pay it forward and send this episode to people you know that are in high school, college, or, or just starting out in the workforce. You could be helping out a lot of other people by doing so. And I don't say that to get clicks. I'm on a personal mission to help as many young people as I can so that they can avoid the mistakes I've seen so many make and so that they can live the life they've envisioned for themselves and their family. I've got a ton of free re resources on my website that can assist you in this process we just discussed that'll help you start this journey to financial freedom and peace of mind immediately. I'm also super excited to announce my online financial transformation program that we just launched. It's called Thrive Path, the revolutionary process to financial freedom and peace of mind. Thrive Path gets to the core, the key source of why so many people struggle financially. And I take you through a proven seven step process so you can achieve financial freedom and eliminate financial stress once and for all. Click the link to learn more. With that, I wish you all the best. Don't forget to ring that bell below and subscribe for future episodes. Until next time, upward and onward. Take care.